everyone welcome to dedicated dentist where we probe dentistry 32 reasons why so today's topic of discussion is survey so survey is a, a method of collection of data i will give you an example so that you will have a better understanding uh, say you have to conduct a tobacco cessation program in an area so you are going to collect data for that like how uh, you will know whether it is more prevent tobacco consumption is more prevalent whether in males or females so this is one data you'll collect um, and then also you'll check of um, how many tobacco shops are present in that particular area this is another type of data that you will collect and more such data you will need for conduction of uh, tobacco cessation program so this is known as survey so after you have conducted the survey or you have the data with you now accordingly you are going to plan out the things uh, you are going to uh, develop a policy on on how you can educate the people there in that particular area who consume tobacco more so this is what survey is useful for survey can be done for any research for anything even the census is a type of survey so the survey is um, a non-experimental type of research uh, non-experimental as in we are not doing any intervention the e uh, examiner or the investigator is not doing any intervention unlike that in rct or experimental epidemiology where we were giving medicine to, or therapy or vaccine to one group whereas placebo to the other group so in survey we are not doing any intervention it's just that we are collecting data and this is useful for conducting research it can be any research it's this is not just related to dentistry or medical it can be any research for any research this is to encourage over health and develop various health services and policies so as the definition goes it's a systematic method of collecting information from a sample of population of interest okay so we are taking a sample of population now there are two types of survey descriptive and analytical uh, descriptive describes the disease and analysis is we are doing analysis of the disease and testing hypothesis so again these two descriptive and analytical are of two type based on time frame that is cross-sectional and longitudinal sure you watch my video on descriptive analytical epidemiology so we yeah, are coming back to this descriptive study tells about the distribution of disease with respect to the time place age sex and person and analysis analytical is we are testing the hypothesis and uh, we uh, conduct on why does the disease occur in particular set of person so cross-sectional survey uh, again descriptive and analytical are of two type cross-sectional longitudinal based on time frame so cross-sectional is carried out at one point in time whereas longitudinal it is done over a period of time or for years like we are if we are doing a psychological survey uh, so there are various methods on how we can collect data we can either take an health in interview survey that is face to face questions or we can do a health examination survey by a team of doctors and auxiliaries or we can see the health records of the patients or maybe a questionnaire that is we can mail them the questions or telephone interview now this is a very important essay or long answer question asked that is steps in surveying so first we have to establish the objective we should be very clear about our objective it should be clear tested by null hypothesis and described so it is can it is stated in the form of hypothesis so we um, test this uh, with a null hypothesis it states that there is no difference in between the groups okay so the example is there is difference in periodontal status of males and females age 35 45 in Mangalore. so we have given this hypothesis now we are going to test this hypothesis whenever there is in comparison when there is no comparison between the groups then the objective is stated um, by describing what is to be measured so coming to the null hypothesis it is used for comparison of two or more groups say we have males and females and we are going to check their periodontal status so we see if this difference is an actual difference or is it by chance so that is what is done in null hypothesis so the null hypothesis tells that the difference between the two group is not real and it is just a chance occurrence so we calculate that by test of significance we the test of significance uh, calculates the probability of null hypothesis being true so we express this by p-value if it comes to around less than 0.05 that is null hypothesis is rejected that means the difference between two group is actual so after having determined objective the next step of investigation is carried out the second step is designing the investigation so survey protocol so protocol is actually a set of rules and objectives so we have written protocol that is it has purpose and objective just description the type of information that we are going to collect the methods we are going to use for collection of data and describe the sampling methods that we use then the statistical methods then budget is also important the things will be required and if it is economical or not 
that is we prepare a budget and a timetable of the activities when and how we'll collect the data then obtaining approval from authorities say you want to conduct or collect the data from the school then you'll have to take exam um, permission or um, informed consent from their parents or from the school authorities then budget budget should be prepared um, and we should include all the resources required for the same and emergency case and referral say you are carrying out a survey but you are doing the examination and all and in the middle of it uh, someone requires the emergency care so for that you have to provide the emergency care or even refer them to the appropriate service or doctor then selecting sample a sample is chosen from population and that is known as universal parent population sample and sampling will discuss in research methodology then conducting examination so there are four types of examination we prepare a schedule and we examine the patients accordingly. The schedule should be very flexible to avoid fatigue as if the uh, doctors, they experience fatigue, then this will contribute to inaccuracy and inconsistency. So uh, things should be planned beforehand. So the oral examination of child should not take more than 5 to 10 minutes and that of an adult should not take more than 15 to 20 minutes. So and also it is advisable to not to schedule more than 15 children in an hour. Then we'll require certain instruments and sub, uh, supplies obviously for the examination like 30 mouth mirrors, probes, tweezers, cores, constant containers and sterilizing solutions, cloth, paper and all that. And so all inf infection waste disposal standards should also be followed. Every protocol should be followed. There should also also be presence of disposable mask gloves and protective eyewear so we should have a proper chair with headdress if not that then we can use a table or bench and the examiner can sit behind the subject's head proper illumination should be present if not should be done in natural light then there should be some gauze and all the different methods to clean teeth or remove debris from them then there are who assessment forms also present and we should avoid crowding and noise around the examiner and should also have a recorder and an organizing clerk so conducting examination, there are four types of examination, complete examination, that is here we are using mouth mirrors, explorers, uh, diagnostic aids like radiographs, pulp testing, trans elimination, then type 2 is limited, limited as in it is limited to a particular area, say a tooth has pocket, so we are going to just take an IOPA of that, so here also will require mouth mirror, explorer and radiographs. Type 3 is inspection, that is here we are using mouth mirror explorer and illumination. Type 4 is screening, here we are using light especially, tongue depressor and illumination. This is especially for the diagnosis of spots or lesions inside the mouth or the caries or cavities in teeth or abscess in gums. Then comes analyzing data, once examination is done, now we are going to interpret uh, using parametric and non-parametric data. Then draw the conclusion and then we publish the data. Now the oral health service uh, that is pilot survey and national pathfinder survey. This is also very important as a Q. So pilot study. Now before carrying out survey, we have to get an idea about the things we'll require, the resources, the manpower and to get an estimate of the budget and to also get an experience on how the survey will be this is not an actual survey remember pilot study is just like a trial this is not actual survey we take few popul few people and then we conduct a survey okay so it includes these subgroups in a population one or two index age group just that 12 year old okay so it is conducted before the actual survey or actual study so this provides us minimum data although this data is not used in actual survey but still it just gives uh, gives us an idea before conducting an actual survey and this is conducted on a very small scale we take few people prior to conducting that actual survey on a large scale so yeah uses is it provides feasibility we can get an idea about the cost of survey or the duration that it will require and detect the weakness in the system it will also reduce error and we can also know about the problems that will acquire in sampling and research designing also people will get an experience before doing the actual survey but disadvantage is that data obtained is minimum and it is not included in the actual survey and that it is tedious and time consuming yes since we are not using this data uh, it is time consuming then national pathfinder survey 
it covers all the important subgroups of population the population is selected on regional local and national level this is done on large scale because we are using and we are using many different index age groups the reason is because they have different disease levels and treatment needs okay that is why so this has minimum three index age group and it is again useful for planning and monitoring of services in all the country then there are only 10 to 15 sampling sites are required this is a stratified cluster sampling technique it includes the most important or subgroups of population that have different disease levels so the index age groups are 5 year 12 15 35 44 and 65 to 74 years so five years these are uh, examined during their fifth or sixth birthdays this is of interest because this is the we get an estimate of the level of caries in the primary dentition because the changes are uh, seen over a short, speed in, uh, short span of time then that in seen in permanent dentition then 12 years this is considered the global monitoring age for caries and for international comparisons because children have uh, permanent teeth except third molars then 15 years uh, the teeth are exposed to oral environment for three to nine years at this stage and assessment of caries at this stage is more beautiful than that at 12 years and this age is important for the assessment of periodontal diseases uh, you can read uh, the uh, survey articles on PubMed so that you will have better understanding then 35 to 45 years this is again standard monitoring group of health condition of adults then in 65 to 74 years uh, data for this group is also needed for planning appropriate careers for the elderly so the number of subjects in each index group we can examine from minimum of 25 to 50 for each sampling site so the sample design for national pathfinder survey it is usually 10 to 15 sampling sites are required that is in urban areas so select four sites in the city and two sites in two town uh, 25 subjects are sufficient in population when the caries and periodontal disease levels are low but uh, when disease levels are moderate or high the size of sample should be that is we should select 50 subjects 40 or 50 subjects so first the prevalence is estimated and based on this prevalence we get an idea about the sample size so that was all about survey i hope you like the video thank you and have a great day